Hello friends, fans, and superstars. Welcome to your special video on the 12th house at It's Hidden Wisdom. My name is Candace, the intuitive visionary from intuitivevisions.com. Thank you so much for tuning in and watching into this video. Before we start, I'd like to give a special shout out to Nadia for allowing me to bless her channel with my love of astrology and the 12th house. Thank you so much, Nadia, for this opportunity, for this blessing to share what it is that I love. And I've been following Nadia since 2011 and to see her grow and expand on this channel has been quite amazing and to now have the opportunity to be a part of her platform is a truly special moment. So Nadia, thank you from the bottom of my heart. So in this video, we are going to be talking about the 12th house, the 12th house and what it represents, how to work with 12th house energy and what the planets mean. Uh, when they are occupying the 12th house. So my name is Candace, like I said, the intuitive visionary. I have been a lover of tarot, astrology, energy healing, anything esoteric, metaphysical from as far back as I can remember. When I was a child, my first book that I ever checked out from the library was a book on astrology and magic. So this is a gift that I have um, inherited from lineages from my from my family and it feels like a true blessing to to share this knowledge and just to see how many people are interested in this these days so let's go ahead and get started I'm gonna try to make this video um, not super long I'm gonna talk about the 12th house in as depth as I can but if you know anything about the 12th house it can go pretty deep so we'll just touch on the main themes of the 12th health 12th house and then we'll be going over just a quick blurb you know some positive and some areas for development um, in regards to the planets in the 12th house as well as how to work and unlock that 12th house energy so this is a topic very near and dear to my heart as a person who has five planets a stellium in aries in the 12th house uh, i became very curious about this this part of the chart because i had so many of my planets there and when Uranus was transiting my 12th house in uh, or these past seven years in the sign of Aries, I had a major, major awakening uh, in regards to this path and really fully owning um, my love for this and sharing it with the world. So with that came the exploration of wanting to know more about myself. And that's really how I use astrology and tarot as a way to understand more of who you are and use that knowledge to make to make better decisions in your life so 12th house energy has many many different names traditionally it was the house of troubles right so this was a house where if you had planets in it back in the day it was considered to be very malefic it was considered to have bad luck but as time has evolved as astrology has evolved we have considered a different perspective on what the 12th house is. So it is the house of the unconscious, the house of imagination. It's the house of solitude, of confinement, of surrendering to higher service. It's where everything goes to be dissolved. 12th house is ruled by the sign of Pisces, which its ruler is Neptune. So you can understand here with, um, with Pisces being the the ruler of the 12th house, how this relates to mystical moments, spirituality, um, compassion, letting go, surrendering. This is also um, a hidden house, right? It's a house that's not easily accessible because it is representative of the collective unconscious. So accessing 12th house energy sometimes takes a little bit of time to actually bring out of the 12th house and to develop. Um, unfortunately, sometimes the 12th house can be a house of undoing, right? So of self-sabotaging. Um, it's where we are harboring a lot of the past. So if you believe in past lives, then this is definitely the house. It shows you past life incarnations. Or if you don't necessarily believe in past lives, this can just speak to the karma of family. So generational karma. It's karmic debt, right? This is where we feel this is like um we just can't access you know especially if you have a lot of 12th house planets you, it's hard to access you know that energy depending on what the planet is of course and how it's aspected and what sign it 
it's in that's going to change a lot of different things but for simplicity's sakes um it is just a very hidden house so it can be hard to access just like how it can be a challenge to access our own unconscious it does take outside experiences for us to awaken to what is hidden within us and 12th house is a house of solitude it is a house of confinement so this is normally associated with places such as a monastery hospital jails um, rehabilitation centers anywhere that kind of forces you to be alone and forces you to kind of have to look within yourself now this doesn't always manifest that way that doesn't mean if you have 12th house planets that you're gonna go to jail or that um, you're gonna live in a hospital you know those are obviously ways that it can manifest however if you have 12th house planets or your planets within your 12th house solitude is definitely very important you're gonna find yourself being drawn back to moments and experience where life is asking you to take some time for yourself to take some time away from the world and people in the 12th house may actually crave this they may actually desire uh, this solitude they may feel actually overwhelmed by the outside world so they feel much safer um, when they're alone or in solitude this house also represents this the secret self right the part of us that we don't willingly show people and so this is where a lot of because it's unconscious right a lot of our fears hide a lot of our anxieties our worries um a lot of the things that can become taboo get kind of thrown into the 12th house it's a lot of repression energy it's a lot of traumatic experience it's early conditioning um and with that it can also be the house of escapism so solitude because it is a house of, of solitude and aloneness, um, sometimes when we are seeking, we can confuse being alone with escaping. So I would be remiss to not talk about how the 12th house does represent where we do find a lot of people with uh, addictions, you know, substance abuse problems, um, the alcoholic, right? And this doesn't have to just be related to drugs, right? This can be anything that we use as a way to escape so that can be food that can be sex it can be work it can take shape in many different forms but there is ultimately this desire here for people who have planets who have strong placements in the 12th house to return to this place of oneness right to return to this place uh, where we experience all of our needs being fulfilled right it's that time when you're in the womb um, before you enter into the world and everything that you need is provided for you and you feel so connected to source because that separation or that feeling of separation hasn't happened a lot of people with the 12th house can feel um, very out of place in the common world right because they're looking to transcend this experience they're looking for that energy that immerses them that takes over them and um, elevates them to to beyond the mundane right they want the spiritual experience they want the mystical moments they want to be outside of this body and to explore what is really the truth on a very energetic level 12th house also is where we devote ourselves to a act of higher service right and most of the times this means a divine service right so even if you don't subscribe to a religion or to a certain label or name of what you call a higher power, that energy is very much important for you. And however you choose to label it is, is of least important. It's more the fact that you're actively working with this energy, recognizing that this energy is actually leading you. So this is actually a lot of that behind the scenes energy, right? Because it's things that you can't or that are not out in the open things that I'm, i think of also the the tarot card that comes up which i have here somewhere but I, I had it to show it to you um but it i'm very much reminded of the tarot card it's the moon card in the tarot and the high priestess right and these are things that you know are a bit mysterious enigmatic you know again really hard to to try to um, to access because it's very mysterious 
And so it's a lot of um, things that we just don't see that are happening in uh, everyday occurrence. It's a lot of we feel into it, right? We feel that something is happening, but we're unsure of how to get it. And a lot of that feeling, that feeling is what provokes people in the 12th house energy to go on a quest to discover something. And a lot of that, a lot of that is sometimes gone through, you know, substance abuse. But the promise of the 12th house is liberation, right? Because when we see that we are using um, a, a fox form of connecting, right? Because we want to be connected. We're, when we're living in the world, we're feeling disconnected from the source. And so all we're trying to do is get back to that place, get back to that feeling where we feel connected to what is true and real. And so that process of finding, you know, of what that is for us can lead to that spiritual liberation. And, you know, while there's so many things buried within the 12th house, there's also so many hidden treasures too, right? So what you find in the unconscious isn't always necessarily negative or bad. It actually can be a very powerful resource and ally for you. But again, this is energy that can be hard to access. It can take some time to develop and it can take, um, a lot of different experience and sometimes even painful experiences for you to awaken to this energy so uh, like i said the moon card is representative of 12th house energy and the tarot as well as the high priestess but let's go ahead and talk a little bit about where uh, what each planet in this house can represent so we're just gonna go um, go in order or in my order <laughs> so for the sun in the 12th house Sun can sometimes represent the father, so this can indicate um, an absent father or a father who was at least psychologically absent for you. Uh, sun also represents our ego and identity, and this can be where we feel as if we don't have a strong center to rely on or even a concrete ego identity to associate with, right? Because maybe we did not get that developed or encouraged um, in our earlier years. So this can feel like you feel a little bit, you know, invisible. Um, sometimes with the sun and the 12th, it can be low self-esteem, low confidence, you know, again, like not having that solid, solid ego. And it can be inclined towards um, spiritual and psychological growth, right? So that's a positive of having the sun in the 12th house, right? It has a potential to, for you to have an inner base from where you direct your entire life. The beautiful thing about having a 12th house sun is that you have the power really to set an intention and to really release it. You don't have to put in a lot of effort or will to receive what it is that you want. It's like you just orient your inner world to attract what it is that you desire and it finds its way to you. The sun is very magnetic. It draws to you. So learning how to use um, the sun energy in your 12th house is of a vital important, right? Because it does indicate your vitality. Now with the moon in the 12th house, it does indicate Right, the mother. So this can be um, a mother who was absent in early adulthood or a mother who was just psychologically absent. You know, maybe she was a child herself and you had to, with a, a moon in the 12th house, you had to feel as if you had to nurture your mother more than, you know, her nurturing you. And so this is also, a, you know, a mom who is not psychologically present or even emotionally present for their child. Um, and because of that, you know, someone can can take that message in early conditioning and translate that as to I only ha I can only depend on myself. So Moon and the Twelfth House can be very reliant people. They can learn to only trust in themselves and not become dependent on anybody or become needy. And that's actually a fear of the Moon and the Twelfth House that they will be perceived as needy or dependent, but they want to appear strong, right? but inside of them is a very young and um, underdeveloped small child. So this can, um, you can look for connections in other ways if you weren't able to get that with your mother. And one of those main ways is food. So food could be um, a big source of nourishment for you. Um, and it could be, that also could be a source of how you use to soothe yourself. 
but Moon in the 12th, 12th house is also very impressionable. It's easy for them to take on the feelings of their environment and the people around them. So this is why solitude is so important. But on the other end, it makes them incredibly psychic and makes them incredibly, you know, intuitive. These are people who have experience with astral traveling, with lucid dreaming, with, you know, channeling higher spirits. So it does make you feel very connected to the unseen realms and um, it makes you very protective of your own, of your vulnerability and your own sensitivity. And at some point in your life, you ha you do realize that it is your responsibility to protect this vulnerable aspect of who you are. With Mercury in the 12th house, this is an energy that is quite reflective. It is in mind of the artist, very, very creative. Um, Mercury 12th house people, you will find that they talk to themselves a lot. It is just, it's as if you you think they're talking to somebody else, but it's actually they're just having, um, they have a very vivid dialogue with their own internal world. Um, but Mercury in the 12th house can also become very anxious or vulnerable about their own mental capacities. You know, it could be when they were younger that their way of thinking wasn't encouraged. Instead, um, it was made to seem bad. And so they may question uh, the, validity, the validity of their thoughts or their perceptions. Sometimes though, also as well with Mercury in the 12th house, it can be a lot of anxious um, and tense energy. So the whole mind body connection is very prevalent here because when that starts to get imbalanced, it can create um, psychosomatic experiences within the body that are hard to access, you know, what the root cause of them are or, or able to identify with. But Mercury in the 12th house does have a very deep, deep intuition. They're able to read in between the lines. They're able to uh, read body language very, very well. Um, these are people who are on the quest to know more about their own psychological processes. They want to enhance um, their perceptions on human behaviors. These are people who are not interested in small talk. They want to get down to the core. They want to talk about topics that have depth to them. They want to be able, through their communication, be able to transcend this human experience. Now with Venus in the 12th house, this is secret lovers, secret affairs. Uh, people with Venus in the 12th house don't necessarily like to show public display of affection. They'd rather be more private with their love life. And when they're not finding fulfillment within their personal relationships, they have a tendency to turn within to receive, you know, to receive that love. But this also can be indulgences as well, right? This could be secretly eating a pint of ice cream at one o'clock in the morning or getting a credit card in buying, you know, whatever is you like for me, it's like buying, um, 10 tarot, tarot decks at one time, right? So there's this indulging quality, right? That um, Venus brings to the 12th house, especially because it's rule, it is ruled by Venus and Libra. So it does talk about the material, material world, <clears throat> excuse me. However, um, this also can relate to just obviously our very love relationships, our love languages. And when Venus is in the house, is in the 12th house, it can indicate that desire to meet the ideal partner, right? To have soulmates. This is someone who um, loves the idea of love or who loves to love rather than the actual practicality of love, right? Because there's the uh, tendency to place the other on a pedestal, to idolize them. And naturally, as all humans do, they fall from their grace. And that can be a bit of a jarring experience for people who have Venus in the 12th house because it can make them become very resentful of the people that they find themselves in romantic connections with. But Venus in the 12th house does have the potential here for spiritual liberation through the artistic endeavors. They, can, they have the ability out of most to develop their artistic skills for, as a way to be very healing for the collective. Um, and lastly, Venus in the 12th house can just avoid relationships in general and focus more on their spiritual connection, their creative connection. It, it just could be that they find themselves really overwhelmed by 
um, relationships because this is where they find themselves. This is where they discover more of who they are. And sometimes, especially with 12th house energy, what is reflected back to us isn't the most easiest or doesn't even feel the best. With Mars in the 12th house, this is a quite a bit quite an interesting energy here, but this can denote lack of physical energy. It can uh, express a lack of desire for physical activity um, or they want to avoid strenuous exercising, but they can just be very insecure about their whole body image. Um, and this is a house where, because it is repression and Mars does deal with anger, um, this is a house where they can, a lot of their anger gets repressed, right? So most times people who have this placement grew up in a home where their anger was actually shunned, right? Or they were, it was made to seem like a bad idea. So because they don't have healthy ways of expressing their anger or, or, or are even in touch with their true source of anger, they can internalize this and turn this anger towards themselves, which can become depression. So that's a caution of Mars in the 12th house. Um, this is a lot of restless energy. You know, Mars is our drive. It's how we make things happen. But on the other end, it can give you um, a lot of inner motivation, a lot of inner discipline. This is a desire to assert yourself properly. And this can be the courageous explorer of the inner world, right? It's all how we choose to use energy and a lot of the 12th house is this kind of all or nothing pattern but we'll talk in later at the end of the video of how to uh, use this energy as more as hidden wisdom than <laughs> accessing as a house of troubles but um, with Mars in the 12th house this is also um, our vulnerability about sexuality again it sexual sexuality can have been a taboo growing up in the family and so that person can be out of touch with what is um, how to assert themselves in terms of sexual matters with Jupiter in the 12th house Jupiter fits quite nicely here as the ancient um, ruler of Pisces is Jupiter but this is also the placement where um, escape I feel escapism is at its highest potential, right? Because wherever Jupiter goes, it also expands. And so um, this can be the person who indulges just a little bit too much, drinks too much, eats too much. You understand, right? So it just makes everything larger. So it's easy for these people to um, find themselves kind of falling into those substance abuse patterns. but. On a more positive note, <laughs> Jupiter does represent um, an inner explorer of the psychological and the spiritual world, right? The, the faith is is strong here. It's it's motivated to, to follow your bliss, right? So again, the feeling, because we're talking about a water sign, Pisces, Neptune. A lot of this is felt on an energetic and emotional level here. But um, Jupiter, people with Jupiter in the 12th house can also feel vulnerable about their beliefs. Maybe their beliefs actually were not encouraged when they were growing up or they they had beliefs that were given to them and any type of beliefs that they felt that were true for them those were not uh, celebrated or even encouraged you can um with people with jupiter in the 12th house this could be people who deny themselves any type of fulfillment again there's this all or nothing pattern that we're oscillating between uh extremes here in the 12th house so on one end it's like you know fully believing and having faith in the success and the good things in life on the other end is feeling very pessimistic and very resentful towards life and it's not allowing oneself to be to be very happy so that can be very judgmental uh, be very critical of oneself but the goal of a Jupiter 12th house is ultimately to bridge this inner and outer experience um, and extract the wisdom from it because Jupiter is wisdom here so you can access hidden wisdom you can access wisdom from your lineages from from past lives from your spirit guides this is a very spiritual placement for Jupiter with Saturn in the 12th house this is this is definitely one of the more challenging uh, planets to have in the 12th house because Saturn already does represent our limits, limitations, 
our restrictions and our fears. And so when Saturn is in the 12th house, Saturn can actually be afraid to be alone. It can be afraid of its own inner life. It can also be afraid of its own emotional uh, vol <laughs> volatileness, or I don't know if I'm saying that word correct, but um, it's emotionally volatile and that scares, um, that scares Saturn, right? Because a lot of this, that energy has been repressed for so long. Um, it may be hard for these individuals to be alone on their own because it brings up, it, it threatens all the defenses that they have placed, all the structures that they have placed to keep themselves safe, to keep themselves guarded from experiencing the waters of, of 12th house energy. Again, this is all or nothing dynamic, so it's very pessimistic. It can be um, subject to self-doubt, to judgment, to feelings of abandonment, feelings of rejection, uh, feelings of not being you know, enough. This is uh, hiding your negativity from others, appearing to have um, it all together in a sense, right? And so people gravitate towards that. Like People actually like that about you because you're able to keep a very happy and um composed um image to the outer world but on the inside you're feeling the you know the opposite of that you know you're feeling at any moment that like you know it's going to crumble and you're going to just drown you know in the waters but saturn does give a good placement here in order to in order for you to build an inner structure or inner foundation that you can uh, rely upon that is built on solid ground and this gives you the ability to commit to to work and to completing any tasks that you need to especially in regards to your own spiritual growth now with uranus in the 12th house this can be a fear of expressing your own individuality expressing your own uniqueness you know on one end you fantasize about being the rebellious true authentic self that you are but at the simultaneously also fearing, you know, the rejection of that, the um, the response from that, and not feeling as if you're able to truly kind of step into who this um, fantasy is that you have of yourself. Because Uranus in the twelfth house is very much interested in progressive knowledge and radical philosophies. It's not interested in following the crowds or even being very mainstream so it's like while they may identify with the misfits of um of society they also don't want to join in on like any groups or uh, communities that celebrate those individualistic traits in fear of not wanting to be like everybody else um but what's important to them is to choose their own path to be authentic you know to themselves and it may be difficult for them to embrace this very individual and unique part of themselves because these are moments of genius, like sudden, uh, sudden moments of insight. They're very intuitive. They're very psychic. They're very progressive, you know, in their thinking. But because maybe they don't have people around them who reflect that same genius um, about them, they can be fearful of actually expressing it themselves. But you know, over time, they do draw certain experiences to them that help them become more comfortable with expressing um, their own individual needs. With Neptune in the 12th house, uh, Neptune is at home here, right? It's ruled by Pisces. Pisces rules the 12th house. So this makes people deeply, deeply compassionate. This is a person who is able to you know, hold the pain of the world and to offer healing and guidance. It's like the mission of, of Neptune in the 12th house. They seek to nurture and they seek to protect. And they're very protective of the people who don't have a voice, who can't fight for themselves, right? Because they have experienced this too, right? There's a deep sensitive vulnerability within them that they hesitate to let, you know, to let people in. They hesitate to let the walls down. Um, and they're, this is a very psychic, um, very psychic placement and also a placement that is very inclined to absorb the energies of people and of their environment. So alone time, again, is very, very important so that they can recharge and dispel some of this energy because when they are, when they're taking on so much of everyone else's stuff, they can inter internalize that and feel very disorganized or feel very unstable 
um, or just not like they're on any type of solid ground, very much up in the air. Excuse me. Um, but people with Neptune in the 12th house have the ability to channel, high, you know, higher beings, higher energies, whatever you want to call it. Um, but they can also channel their uh, imagination into amazing, amazing artistic and creative pursuits. Uh, they have have to have the ability though to be honest with themselves because this is a placement that can be very deceptive and it's less more it's less about being deceptive towards other people but more about self-deception right and about living in fantasy and not having um, any type of footing in in the mundane world you know people with Neptune in the 12th house don't really see the value in in the mundane world. They're much more, much more engaged, much more interested in the realm of fantasy and imagination and what uh, you can't see with your own two eyes. But they are motivated by those unconscious fantasies, those inner ideals. Um, and so this can lead to a fall from grace or feeling disenchanted, but their energy is best utilized when they are being of service to the collective. Now, when we have this energy, uh, when we have Pluto in the 12th house, this is probably by far, I believe, one of the most challenging uh, placements to have, right? Just because what Pluto represents, right? It represents that collective or that shadow. And when it's the 12th house, it's that collective shadow. And sometimes that is a very overwhelming feeling to hold all of that um shadow energy for the collective and it can be very confusing um because you can feel as if you know what it is that you're feeling um is happening personally to you but most times what you're feeling is uh, what's happening on a much more grander scale this can sometimes denote you know um physical or emotional abuse even possibly sexual abuse um this also can denote um a lot of festering of resentments of um, our dark, our demonic forces within us, those darker um, energies that that pull us down, kind of those more primal energies. And this, um, this can be this can be a challenge for sure, because it's hard to access those psychological processes, because at any moment, it can feel very volcanic, like you're just going to erupt. And sometimes, um, with this 12, with Pluto being in the 12th house energy, it is, it comes out in a way that um, just, it's not fair, you know what I mean? It's, it's not the good things in life. It can be very violent, very angry. Um, it is where that distorted child lives. It's holding a lot of anger and a forgiveness for a lot of the pain and trauma that it has experienced. But however, this can be this can be good, right? Because it can give you the power, it can give you the motivation to dive deeper into your psychological process, to dive deeper into um, the exploration of human experience, of understanding your own personal shadow and also understanding the collective shadow. So this gives people, I mean, this is like, I'm thinking of that scorp scorpionic energy of people who go down to the depths of their psyches and but then rise up to to heal and be a completely transformed different person so you know as with any placement as with any house as with anything in astrology it always has its you know its strength and then areas where it wants to develop and how we access or how we work with the 12th house energy is through um, introspection is through an exploration really you know s therapies of any kind psychotherapy um, any kind of therapeutic processes are going to be beneficial for you to unlock that 12th house energy and because this is a house that is most times working on such extremes working on such all or nothing patterns the wisdom is learning how to kind of dance to dance in the middle right to take both experiences and to integrate them because right this is where we want to return back to wholeness before we start the journey again it is completion of the cycle um 12th house is the last house in the in the natal chart so this is it's darkest before dawn, right? Before our ascendant happens, we are in the 12th house. And what's in the 12th house is valuable in order for us to 
fully embody whatever that rising sign is. So I love the 12th house. I love its all its wisdom. It's not always the most easiest house to work with, but when you are able to unlock the energies within your 12th house, it is an experience that goes beyond words. It does, you fully get to experience that transcendental experience while also still being a part of this world. And that is the promise of any planets in the 12th house that you do receive the hidden wisdom. And when you decide to explore the deeper recesses of your psyche and of the mind and of your own spirit, you see that what you find isn't always bad, but actually can be a great source of treasure and can be your greatest ally. So that is your 12th house um, video. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you so much for watching. You're going to find all my information down below here in the description box of how you can connect with me. I also as well have a special little sale for all those who watch this video, which you also can find in the description box below. But it has been a pleasure to share this knowledge with you. Again, thank a very big thank you to Nadia for allowing this opportunity. And thank you for sharing your time and space with me. Until next time, take care.